real food system begins with real seed. Real seed is not a manufacture. It is a self-organized living system. And therefore it is diverse. constantly evolving space as we find out what people want from us we evolve to sort of meet that and also hopefully it's something that we'll get to eat and enjoy as well normally we get seconds or the bun cast offs <laughs> <laughs> well it's really good fun too because we work all day and then we shower before we go and pick up from school because we're pretty smelly and we're pretty showered so we go have a coffee go get Ty come back and then we're like let's go to what we do today in the garden so we just come down just yeah, there and look at it. So it's wow. quite really fulfilling. Yeah. I think it's probably the most fulfilling thing that we've ever done. Yeah. Creating. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been out for ten months now. Since yeah. January, and tomorrow we we'll throw it open to the public. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we pick fresh every day. That's it. We're not storing food. We're not shipping food. We just pick fresh. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll encourage people to bring their own containers and things so we can cut down on plastics and packaging and things like that. Yeah, and that way it's basically, if you don't grow it yourself, it's good luck. Yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> uh, but if you can't grow it yourself, uh, then we're the next best thing. You can yeah. come here and if you're not in a hurry, you can grab a seat and we'll go and pick what you want while you wait. On Friday we do the Steiner Market and we also pick for another food co-op for cans. So. Yeah. so we can have a wander around if you like. <laughs> Any yeah. questions? Oh, oh, we don't want your GMO Hey, hey, ho, oh, oh, ho GMO has got to go Hey, hey, ho, oh, oh, ho We don't want your GMO Hey, hey, ho, oh, oh, ho Your GMO has got to go <laughs> We have to find solutions like that because we can't be wrong We're waving madly at you We've inherited literally 
This sort of lets everyone know though, it doesn't matter how bad your soil is, from literally just a square meter up to a quarter acre like this, there is some food that you can grow. And where did you get the soil? The soil, we had this soil made for us. Okay, well this one here doesn't have much soil. This is actually a live composting bed that we built. So we just sand on the bottom of the drainage, and then we fill it up with bottles and layers of uh, green matter. And it's only about a bit of cooling of the organic soil on top. And how long did you just straight into it? Because what happens is most of the stuff as the water comes through it ends up inside these. So you don't have a build up of too much nutrient or anything like that. It all gets sucked into the bag. So it keeps it fairly balanced. All the soil in the bag, we've had to buy that, but we've had it specially made for us because not many people you can walk into their landscape supply place and go, hey, I need 50 cubic metres of only organic soil. So it's been a work in progress. We've had it made for us and we can get certain amounts at certain times. That's it. Uh, we're at the point now where we don't need to do that. We can enrich our own stuff. And in the, you know, probably the next rotation or generation, we'll actually take the soil out of our raised Smell. beds because we're creating soil. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to do. The perlite's just an expanded rock. The beautiful thing about perlite is while it adds drainage to the bottom, it also actually retains moisture. So as it expands under heat when it gets cooked, it has micro holes in it and they just fill up like a little sponge ball to the bottom of whole water in that allow lots masses of water to pass away through. So again, good water retention, things like that. So it hasn't been watered for over a week. Oh, wow. oh look at that, it's wet. Oh, wow. Yeah. And if anything it's probably too wet. <laughs> rotations of these growing at the moment so these are just coming to their end and the ones right down the end are just starting they're only a couple of weeks old uh, then we've got interplanted capsicum eggplant capsicum and then we wanted to grow some lettuces in here but they're terrible because the eggplants are just too successful mm. and they've shaved them out and they're all bolting. I just cut the leaves off the bottom though, I've just got beautiful big umbrellas and the whole yeah, they thing. They look like this. But, I, but yeah, <laughs> I thought, oh, those lettuces don't look like they're doing so great, so I hacked them off. But they bolted a bit from that. So there's a lot of trial and error with some of the stuff too. Mostly that's me. <laughs> but it's also the time of the year, lettuces will bolt now anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To think that they'd be some elaborate watering system or something really clever like that. We just use them as weights. <laughs> so it was a really cheap, free way to make weights. Yep. There are times where the caterpillars get out of control, and because we're organic, we have exclusion netting that we put over these, and then the milk bottles hold the netting down, and then I'm just too lazy to pack them away. Why would you pack them away anyway? Yeah, why would you? <laughs> so that's just a free way to hold down our That's it, we were using You can buy these pins, it costs $7 each, or you can use milk bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then you can empty them out That's it. Yeah. And sometimes when I haven't wanted to turn the, the pump on and water down here and I need to give something a drink, I just go, oh, there's a milk bottle with some water at that <laughs> time. Yeah. If you think I'm going to put a drink through the handles. And... Trying to take control to modify and commodify our food bowl. I don't know if anyone knows much about how they produce strawberries on a commercial scale. But they have a list of foods that they call the Dirty Dozen. And they're the 12 foods that get the most chemicals in the world. Strawberries rank number one on that list. Wow. Okay, so by the time they get to you at the supermarket, your average strawberry has been uh, subjected to over 58 different chemicals, oh. all right, of which probably about 40 of them uh, would kill you if you drank those chemicals or ate them on their home. Okay, if anyone's ever seen a person spraying chemicals on a strawberry, they look like they're off to the moon. They've got the full suit on, respirators, air tanks, things like that. Uh, we were giving our kids strawberries every day thinking we're the best parents on the planet and then we found out about how bad they are and really that's what started our journey into where we are now, mm. is trying to give our child good food. Mm. These strawberries have zero chemicals and everywhere, especially in the tropics, will tell you you can't grow strawberries without chemicals, you can't grow strawberries in the tropics, etc, etc, etc. This kind of says you can. We've got a thousand plants here. Uh, they're all organic, there's zero inputs to these, other than the old Pyganic every now and then if it gets out of control for us. Uh, Pyganic, it's the only uh, certified organic pyrethrin. 
Um, and I'm normally covered in mosquito bites when that gets put on, which we've only ever put it on once. But because I wanted to make sure I came in after the bees had gone to bed, so I'm in... Yeah, so it's very late, like about 5.36 o'clock, so by the time the mozzies are full swing, that's when I've been here, but yeah, that's the yeah. only thing. Where did you get your project? Uh, we got it online, but you can get it locally from like Environmark, things like that. Yeah. So all We're, pyrethrums. There's lots of pyrethrums, but only one, hey. We looked and saw yeah. some, and they say organic, but it's, there's only one that's approved, so that's the one but we All the others have a petrochemical in them, mm -hmm. okay, which acts as a coagulant when you mix it. Organics are only certified organic ones. Banana, we have only literally used it once. Even organics, we try not to put them on if we don't it, have to. It's a bit of a race because once they're ripe, the ants will try to get to them. So we try and pick twice a day. So we've been making a lot of ice creams and stuff because <laughs> if they're, as soon as they're there and they're sweet, the ants will be yeah. smashing into them and go for them. So we just try and get them off or <clears> eat them. <throat> Sometimes you shake out a little ant or two before mm. you eat it, but we don't want your GMO. So the bale system is basically what we've got over here, except for there's a bit more uh, intensive composting goes on with it before we plant into it. So there's about a 10 to 14 day withholding period before we will plant into them. We, what we do is we actually make sure these are alive living compost before we then add about two inches of our compost and organic soil. And really that's just enough to yeah. be able to form around the, the runners when we um, plant them in. Wow. Okay. And then we haven't had to add anything to them. So we put one compost tea on and that's it. And that's just sitting straight on top of the hay bale. Straight on yeah. top, yeah. yeah. And when you use the pyrethrum, is that as a preventative or as a remedy? No, basically we're under infestation, so we use it to stop it dead. Yeah, of what? Yeah. Yeah. Of uh, small caterpillars oh, yeah. and also um, little hoppers. Which were well, it was only it was quite a while ago before I was starting to set fruit, and they were actually damaging the leaf so much that I was stunting the plant growth. Okay, uh, anyone that's walking in here now will have squishy stuff between their toes. This is a natural occurring <laughs> byproduct of the composting of the hay bales as the soil comes down. Uh, this is what fertilizes our Can Kong, which is down our wastewater channel that we'll see in a minute, and you'll see what it does for that and why we don't clean it up. Doing a green harvest here, so we're just cutting the tops off and drying that and grinding into a powder. Oh. Uh, we first discovered Moringa as a screening plant because it grows up to 7 to 11 metres in a year. And then we researched as a chop and drop for a permaculture garden. It's huge in nitrogen fixing. And then we found out about the health properties of it. So it's massively high in nutritional qualities. Yeah, and Australia is one of the only places where it's a novelty food. It's not recognised as a food stuff, but in most other countries it's it's no malangay, like heaps of different names all around the world. Um, and it's it's very popular as a staple food in a lot of countries. And in a lot of, I mean, in Sri Lanka and I think lots of Asian countries, they eat the seed? Pod? Yeah, yes, yeah, the, 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 the pod curry. when it's little and then the seed when it gets big. And also you can crush yeah. the seed for oil. Oh, wow. And you can use the crushed <laughs> seed to purify water. So it's got massive amounts Amazing. of different properties. Yeah, yeah. So it's a so miracle a, tree. Yeah, yeah, it is a miracle, miracle tree. tree for nothing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. And so then yeah, yeah. you can talk about the greens and stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. It's not talking to We'll probably get one more crop of those, maybe two, depending on how wet the wet season is and how quick it starts. Yeah, well, I hope we don't. <laughs> Just so I can keep growing lettuces. It's very selfish of me. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, mm -hmm. these lettuces are what's called cut and come again. Mm -hmm. So we can cut them, 
and then in about six days I will regrow and we'll get three to four harvests from each head. Okay, so they're very similar to the varieties you see sold in supermarkets as hydroponic lettuces, where they grow them at massive you know, resource costs and then pull out the whole lettuce and then sell them. Oh, you've got a massive structure. Whereas, you know, our earnings per head is about $4.50 to $6, depending on the they don't go there. Some of them do the green oak, which are the Elkhorn style ones. They do go bitter as they get off. But the uh, butter crunch and the red coral, they don't go bitter and they'll leave them the bowl. Pretty severe. <laughs> So what you'll do is, once it's at harvesting stage, like we'll harvest the leaves and stems and sell them to the right restaurants oh, right. and use it uh, while it's growing. To them. separate products? Or? No, well, you all we'll sell them separately. They are two different products and you have to do that really <coughs> to make it work its while in this sort of space. Uh, then 18 months or two years, and again, because this is the first, there's, there's no books to go on or anything like that. I've done the only Versace growing course available in the world. Uh, and there's just, just no precedence for growing it in the tropics, there's none. So everything's sort of suck and see. I mean, we may be harvesting the rhizomes in a year, we may be harvesting them in three years, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, when you do, then you lose the whole thing. And I suppose you'd be looking at trying to sell them locally too. Oh, you? absolutely, yeah. Just to keep that yeah. freshness, yeah. yeah. So, there's some innovation happening in the no, room. Good. Hey, hey, go, go, GMO, let's go.